Hey, this is The Fight Nerd. I'm here now at the Henzo Gracie Academy in Manhattan, New York, with the man himself, the living legend, Henzo Gracie. Henzo, how's it going today? Nice to be here with you guys. I'm going great, my friend. All right, now we were here today because we were filming the commercial for the MMA World Expo. So tell us a little about what your participation is in this event. For a moment, I thought that this was a horror show because you have such an ugly model <laughs> on this commercial. First time I heard that. <laughs> no, but the reality, we're putting up uh, the, the, the Hanzo Gracie Open competition, grappling competition, and it will be an unbelievable experience. I know because normally we do the invitation, which is a close competition, and we have around 500 athletes. We expect to have over a thousand competitors on this tournament, you know, and it will be an unbelievable show. A lot of good grapplers will be showing up, especially with the absolute division. With, we allowed, we allowed uh, the uh, $3,000 for the grabs there for the champion. So well, if you're good, you should be there. Are any Gracie's going to be competing in this event? Oh, believe it. We're going to have a couple. <laughs> Can you say any names yet or right away for that? Uh, not yet. We're making the team right now, but we're going to have some good guys on it. Okay. Now, you were at the UFC Fan Expo also this past weekend at the Tokyo 5 booth. How was that event, and how was UFC 118 for you, if you had a chance to see that? Oh, man, it was unbelievable. Frank Edgar Poha did, uh, did like the book tells you to do it, you know. It was perfect, unbelievable fighter, kept a rhythm that was like, it was the first time that I saw, I caught myself shaking on my chair, you know, like barely being able to hold myself sitting down. And he finally got the recognition that he deserved. He is a champion and nobody can question that. And UFC was great. And also that event was Randy Couture versus James Tony, And uh, even Joe Rogan said, you know, here we are at UFC 118, reliving UFC 1 all over again. Uh, tell us, I mean, do you think as we take steps forward in mixed martial arts, are we going to also be taking steps backwards with matches like this, where it's one sport coming in to fight what they're saying is, you know, basically boxing versus MMA? You see, the reality is people want to know how would it be. So that's how you see it. Like, if you're a pure boxer, that's how the fight's going to end up. You're going to end up choking on the floor without completely no control of the fight at all. And that show, even though Randy was much smaller and... You know, he was much more efficient than actually just a pure boxer. And if you ask about comparing styles, the MMA fighter has a huge advantage over any boxer. Now, do you think we're going to continue to see these kinds of matches where it's MMA versus boxing or MMA versus football? Or do you think eventually this will die out? Uh, only if boxers realize that they need to train for MMA instead of training for boxing, you know? You have to know everything. You have to know takedowns. You have to know finishing holds. You have to know if you have your back on the floor how to defend yourself. And you know, know if you're in an arm triangle choke, how to get out of that one. Definitely. If you realize, like, um, like uh, Brock Lesnar learned that lesson well. Last, uh, last fight he had, he got, a knock, he got knocked down by Carvin, and he was able to defend himself, stay in guard, until he was able to get on top again. Unbelievable fighter. He fought a very smart fight. And a lot of people are saying that Brock will be there for a short time. I don't believe so. I think Brock is a, is a very good athlete, and he'll be there for a long time because he's a smart athlete. You're an athlete who's been around for a long time also, and you just made your UFC debut uh, back at UFC 112. Uh, tell us a little of that because uh, you know, that ended up as being a loss for you against Matt Hughes. Tell us what, what went wrong for you in that fight. I think the time that I stayed without training at all. I was for two years and a half without rolling in the mat. I was just working, making what we have here today, a very successful jiu-jitsu school, and I was able to put everything together. Today we have four schools, and they are running smooth. Every single one is packed. And in order to do that, I had to sacrifice my training, and that's, I end up paying for that, you know. And, but I think I did very good, especially for the fact that I was fighting a very strong fighter who tried to avoid completely the grappling aspect of the fight with me. Oddly enough, for some reason. Yes, and... I, I just didn't have the endurance well, because I lost 40 pounds and I trained only for six months to be able to, to get in there. And it wasn't, I realized there wasn't time enough. I felt myself very weak physically and, you know, but uh, I was fighting a tough guy. I wasn't getting a, a Joe out of the corner to right. beat him up, you know. In reality, I got the tough, one of the toughest guys out there and I was very glad how the fight went. You know, and it was a very good learning experience, and I'm going to be able to pass to all my students and all the people that, that train with me. So still learning, even though you're at this point in your career? Oh, definitely. This is, the moment that you believe you're not learning anymore, you, you're out of the business. <laughs> all right, now also, uh, Ricardo Almeida recently fought Matt Hughes and also ended up being on the losing end. Uh, I don't know if you were training, helping him train for that fight. Um, what was your analysis of that fight? 
I think uh, Lady Luck was sitting on Matt's lap. That's what happened. <laughs> you know, like Ricardo was moving in a way that I never seen before. He was training so hard. And that fight for sure was him. If you ask me, I would bet everything I had on him. And, but unfortunately, MMA is a surprise box every single time. Yeah. All that he needs is to land a, a punch with that small glove that goes through your defense. Even though Ricardo's hand was in perfect position, the punch just went right through to his jaw. And when he realized he was being choked on the floor and he was out, you know. So welcome to MMA. Never bet on it. <laughs> now, you mentioned uh, training and having other things in between this Matt Hughes fight. Uh, how is it different for you for training for fights now as opposed to about 10 years ago, let's say? To me, it's much harder. 10 years ago, I didn't have the many worries that I have. If I gave you my bills to pay for one month... I can't afford my bills. Why are you giving me yours, too? Well, my friend, if I give you that, you understand. No more hair will be sticking on your head. You know, so I, I was able to put a lot of stuff together that, in a very solid way that I hope it will last forever. In the reality, I will see my grandkids running my business and, and teaching jiu-jitsu, you know. And thanks to that, I had to sacrifice my career a little bit as a fighter, you know. It's, you have to understand, I've been doing this since I was 15 years old, 14 years old, that I've been competing I was born. in a very, yes, in a very professional way. And, like, you can't expect me to be in the top of the game until I'm 50, you know. So sometimes I'll be fine, sometimes I'll be a little off, but one thing is for sure, like for the quality of Jiu-Jitsu that I have, I'm always a dangerous opponent when I'm in there. You know, so nobody can take me lightly and nobody should make bets against me because I always have a shot. I never do. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about some of the Japanese MMA promotions since there's a lot of trouble these days with the MMA companies over there like Dream, K1, a little bit Sengoku. Uh, do you think these Japanese companies are going to survive, these big ones, or is it going to be the end of it for them? I really think they should be more professional. The way that they run things and the way that they do it, they should have learned more from the Americans. They had the opportunity before and they didn't do it. You know, I think that's what is taking a huge toll in the, in the Japanese industry. Even though Japan has the most hardcore fan you have ever seen in your life, you know, like uh, every arena that I fought there was 50, 60,000 people on it. You know, like a 30,000 was considered a small crowd watching an event. And, and the reality, they end up losing out that for ego for believing that they nobody else could compete with them and they could do whatever they want they didn't respect the fighters they didn't respect the the, the rules of the game so they end up uh, losing i recently announced uh kazushi sakuraba making his return to mma against jason mayhem miller now what are, do you think are miller's keys to winning this fight against sakuraba i think the rhythm the miller is able to keep will give sakuraba a lot of trouble it's gonna sakuraba is gonna have a very hard time you know, Jason is a very good fighter, moves very well, and I see him winning that fight. Do you want another shot at Sakuraba? I would love to, I would love to, but I need to start training again. I just started this week, so as I feel a little better, we can look forward for something like that. Then we'll start calling out Sakuraba. Hell right. yeah, hell yeah. All right, now, also, you mentioned you have some new schools popping up, so tell us a little about the other places where uh, people on the East Coast can check out Henzo Gracie's new academies. Oh, you can go to Stanford. Connecticut, we have an unbelievable school there. We have an unbelievable school at Homedale, New Jersey. We made a, a 9,000 square feet facility, no beams, everything open. The mat alone is 6,500 square feet. You know, it's one of the best, uh, one of the best, um, one of the best mats out there. We have an expansion for the New York school, so we're adding 6,000 more square foot. Soon we're going to be able to have 16,000 square feet in the midtown Manhattan, a block away from Madison Square Garden. So it's the perfect place for when this sport comes to New York and we're going to be able to be fighting right next door. We can warm up here and cross the street and fight. All right, last question. How do you say the fight nerd in Portuguese? Fighting nerd? Fight nerd, yeah. Uh, nerd lutador. <laughs> what was that? Nerd lutador. Awesome, whatever he said. All right, well, you can catch Henzo at the MMA World Expo coming up November 12th and 13th, or you can catch him here at his academy in Manhattan. Henzo, thanks for your time today. Thank you, guys. Nice being with you guys. All the best, my brother. Thank you. This video is sponsored by Skin Industries, dominating fashion for the past 11 years with hundreds of designs for men, women, and children. Start living in skin today and check out skinindustries.com.